There's a great report in the Google Admin Console that will show you what Chrome apps and extensions have been deployed to your domain. It's time for an app audit. Hi, my name is John Sowash. Welcome back to the Google Admin Bootcamp. We're going to browse into the device section of the Google Admin Console. And it's a little surprising, but there are actually two areas where you can run reports. We're not going to the typical reports section. We're going to click on Chrome and then go down here to reports. And this is going to give us reports related to our devices, our Chromebook deployment. One of the reports is apps and extension usage. And this is a relatively new um, feature of the admin console. It's very useful. Now we're going to run a couple of uh, filters here. I recommend if you're just doing kind of a general app audit to click on all extensions and then remove the date field that will show you literally everything in your domain. So 464 extensions. Now there's a lot of detail here and it can be a little confusing. So let's walk through a couple of, uh, of things. So first off, what you're going to be most interested in is the number of installations. And so we can sort that uh, from highest to lowest. We can see a lot of these are installed by the admin. We're pushing them out, which is why the installation numbers uh, are so high. Now you're going to see a couple that are going to list side load. And that might cause some concern, but I, I wouldn't worry too much. At least take a look at them. Um, most of the side loaded extensions are ones that come pre-installed with a Chromebook. So Google Docs offline comes, the text editor comes um, side loaded. And so you'll see quite a few of those as well. You would need to review them. If you see other apps you don't recognize that say side loaded, then it is possible that a student um, deployed them locally, uh, depending on your admin settings. So we have um, admin installs, uh, side load, and then you'll have quite a few that are multiple. And this can happen if um, it's being pushed to some organization units and others are allowed to install it. It's frequently, if you have different policies for staff and students, you'll get a multiple um, installation uh, listing there. Um, now we have a lot of extensions, over 400 on this one. And one option you can consider is to click this export button. That will uh, download all of this data as a CSV. You can convert that into a Google Sheet and then run all kinds of filters um, and uh, reports on that if you prefer to look at them in a spreadsheet format. Now let's um, click on one of these extensions and take a closer look. So let's click on this ad block extension. This will give us some more details about this particular um, application. Um, most of this detail is just from the web store, gives me a link to the web store listing. This is the number of total active users for this product, not in my district, but in all uh, installations. Um, and then if I scroll down, this is a new feature. Google just announced this not too long ago. They've partnered with two private security firms who um, evaluate the security risk of various applications. Um, I'm not terribly familiar with them. CRX um, Excavator and Spin.ai are the two that Google's partnered with. Now, if you click on these links, it will take you to the risk assessment of these various tools. Now, risk assessment is a little, it's broad. Uh, you know, the score, this one has a very high risk assessment because it is monitoring your browser activity and blocking advertisements. Doesn't necessarily mean that this extension is good or bad. It just means that it requires some pretty in-depth permissions and has the potential to be a security risk. Now, the challenge is that there are other Chrome extensions that have a very low security risk but are specifically being used by students to bypass district security policies. So you have to take these security risks with a grain of salt. Just because it has a high risk doesn't mean it's bad. And just because it has a low risk doesn't mean it's good either. You have to kind of identify what is the purpose of the extension and then make your own informed uh, decision. So you'll see that information. Now, if you keep scrolling down, you'll see the permissions that this application is requesting and requires. And then you'll get the number of installations. Now, this requires a little bit of investigative work. You can see, you know, it doesn't it doesn't list any users, but that's because I haven't drilled down deep enough into my organizational units. So if I go down to my student OU, 
that's where I'll start to see those installations uh, pop in. You have to you have to drill down into a specific OU in order to see exactly who has this particular extension installed. Let's make a change to one of these extensions. I'm going to zip forward to some less popular extensions, see if we can find one that maybe I don't want my students to have. Here's one right here. So this extension, Utility Browser, I happen to know is a common uh, extension that students use to bypass things like GoGarden and Securely. It's a browser within a browser. So I'm going to open that up. Uh, if I can, I can scroll down through my OUs to figure out exactly you know, who is um, using it. So I'm going to open up my students. I'm guessing it's my high schoolers. Let's go down about here. And yeah, so I can see class of 26, there's 14 students uh, that are using this. Now, I'm running a block list right now. I need to add this to the block list. So I'm going to go up to the very top of this uh, page where it currently says allow install. My install policy is just allow everything unless I block it, but I can change it right on this page. I just hit the block button and then it will pull this extension from all student devices who currently have it um, installed and then prevent anyone else from installing it as well. My recommendation is to export a report of all the extensions that are being used in your domain, sift through that, see if you can see any that you feel are problematic or troublesome, and then you can block those extensions and talk to your staff, your students about why that um, is or isn't an appropriate application. Another way you can use this report is to um, see how popular some of your paid services are. So if you're paying for things like um, Kami or Read and Write for Google, you want people to use it. So you can see who's actively using it, where those extensions are installed, and then um, add more resources to encourage people to use those things if you want. If you're interested in more tips and tricks like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to learn more about managing devices and users using the Google Admin Console, you can join me for the Google Admin Bootcamp, my virtual session. That's a comprehensive overview of everything that a Google Admin needs to know.